who was all Papa Five, which keep Bravo Mike from Mike's and Bravo Alpha Alpha. It's a whole different quality. Yeah, don't totally depends on temperature, man. How you move? Ah, I'm getting off now. I'm just over the hill. I'm like over here now with a noise level. I'm like, 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 I thought what I thought it might be fun to do is to have a look at some of the basic aspects of radio and how easy it is to get into radio, even for free. You know, you don't actually have to spend any money to listen to radio transmissions from all over the world. You can do it for nothing, and I'm going to show you how. Obviously, it is possible to go from that, get a license, start transmitting, buy equipment, and do all manner of different things. And I'm going to show you what some of those things are. But I thought we'd start at the beginning today and have a look at a free way to get into radio. And I found this truly amazing, even though I've been using it for years, that uh, people do this. And basically what happens is some people have got SDR or software defined radio receivers and connected them to the internet, not just for their own usage, but to share with other, um, other members of their groups. Some are owned by amateur radio clubs, some are owned by enthusiast clubs, and a lot are owned by individuals. And we're going to have a look at some of those today. And pretty much there is one central resource that you can go to to find out more about them. And that's websdr.org. I've got into a bit more detail on my blog about this. So if you head over to techmaker.co.uk, that's T E K M E a-K-E-R, .co.uk, you'll find some links to these sites and I'll put them on the, on the video as well. But we can access radio receivers all over the world. There are hundreds and hundreds on here. There are 175 servers with 1741 users at the moment and 775 megahertz of radio spectrum. The radio spectrum is wider than that. It covers all manner of frequencies from a couple of megahertz all the way up to many gigahertz from terrestrial transmissions to satellites there is so much on here I could go on about it all day you can of course just select which band you want to do and which region you want to work from one of the things I enjoy doing sometimes early morning is tuning into some of the American uh, SDRs in different parts of the, the United States and, you know, not to be cruel, but when there's been a disaster or a major weather event over there, you can hear a lot of first-hand knowledge through the amateur radio systems over there. And it fascinates me to hear it unedited, or even polit political activities, to hear completely unedited and uncensored radio. It's very enlightening and to hear people's opinions without them being tempered the way that they are on television. So... You can search specifically by band and region. I'm going to take you to two sites today that I use a lot and a lot of UK listeners use a lot. The first one is Hat Green. This is radio based in Stoke-on-Trent in a disused nuclear bunker, which is now a working radio museum. So it's run by some enthusiasts and they have two radios, one for shortwave and one for VHF, UHF. This is quite common that they have multiple radios. So some of these sites have as many as four or six SDR radios. So by selecting different wave bands, you sometimes hop over to a different site and use a different SDR radio. This one does the main HF bands. And you won't hear anything at the moment because I've muted it. Otherwise, you, all you'll hear it is a hiss. So... As with any SDR radio, it's got the classic waterfall display and some tuning mechanisms. And tuning is quite interesting. So I'm going to show you quite a bit about this. 160 meters is technically not short wave, it's medium wave or H, the right at the bottom, because the short wave bands technically starts at 3 megahertz. This is 1.8 to 2 megahertz. Other bands are 80 meters. 
And you can do the conversion in your head if you're clever. It's 300 divided by 80, which is approximately 3.5 megahertz. But you can tell by looking at the frequencies on here. So this one goes down to 3.6. And you can tune it by just highlighting this top bar and sliding it across. So I'll demonstrate how to tune into a couple of these transmissions and also how to recognise what different transmissions are because we have different modes. We have CW, which is Morse code, LSB and USB, which are genetically called single sideband or SSB, AM, we're all familiar with the medium wave and long wave car radios called AM. AM is actually the transmission mode not the wave band. Same with FM. People say the FM band. Actually, there's lots of FM bands that what they actually mean is 88 to 108 megahertz. But FM is used on a lot of frequencies. And then there are two narrow, three narrow modes as well, which will come to in due course. So at the moment, you'll see some solid lines. I tune into one of those. I'll turn the sound up while I do it. OK, so you can hear a continuous tone. That can be there for a number of reasons. It could be somebody's left the transmitter on or fell asleep on, on the key. I'm joking, that doesn't really happen. Sometimes they're radio beacons that are used to monitor propagation across the world. They are monitored by different stations and this tells, allows us to inform amateur radio operators or different radio operators what the conditions are at any particular band. They may also be there making sure that the frequency is clear and it may be used for weather transmissions or emergency transmissions. It can be used for a variety of reasons, but not go into that. For instance, you can see one here, VMAS. That's, that's a specific frequency that's reserved for somebody. Because this is the amateur radio band, and on some amateur radio bands, amateurs only have partial use of the band. They have to give way to other radio users. So you will see th uh, some other transmissions that are not amateur radio on some of these bands. When we see something like this, we can generally say it's either data or voice. Let's find out what it is. I'm going to try and tune it in. As a rule of thumb, frequencies below 10 megahertz are lower sideband. So we're already in lower sideband mode. And if you look at the little yellow thing here, we can see the main carrier frequency is the vertical line and everything to the left of that is a lower frequency. If we were in upper sideband mode, it's the other way around. If we go in AM, it actually has both sidebands. And if we have FM, we have an even wider frequency. And then we have narrow versions of each of those. So let's go to lower sideband. I'm going to tune this frequency in. I'm going to enable the keyboard because this allows me to tune in more accurately and you, you will see why shortly. But basically just using the left and right keys on the keyboard will allow me to tune this in. Now single sideband has an interesting characteristic and as I tune into it you'll hear what I've, I'm trying to explain to you. So I'm deliberately doing this slowly just then you can monitor hear what's going on. Now you notice that's it unintelligible. I'm trying to demonstrate something to you now. I'm going to use the keyboard and I'm going to tune up slowly. So, by tuning slightly to the left and right, we're changing the tone or the frequency of the audio. 
I won't go into the technical reasons behind that, but if you're looking for anything to do with single side pan transmission, you'll soon find out that it's a fairly unique system and it's, it's the only modulation technique that this happens on. So as I tune, the audio frequency varies and when I started it didn't sound like the guy was talking in English. And yes, he had a foreign accent, but sure enough, he is talking in English. And when we get the frequencies right, we end up with a very intelligible transmission. I'll just tune up to the other transmission because it's stronger and demonstrate again. So I'll do a fast tune first and I'll come in from the other side this time. Okay, so that's a bit pinky perky. If you're from the UK, you know who pinky and perky are. So that's a two-way conversation going on and what you will find sometimes with a two-way conversation is that the two frequencies will be slightly shifted of the two transmissions and you may have to move around a bit. So that's single sideband on 40 meters, no it's not, it's on 80 meters. <laughs> so I make mistakes, I've only been doing this since I was 13. So that is the 80 meter band and as I mentioned in the blog each frequency band has slightly different characteristics in terms of the distances, the countries and the transmission modes that get used. You'll find loads of people have favourite bands that they enjoy. I have certain bands that I enjoy and 80 metres is right at the bottom of what my radio will pick it up. There is one I can pick up lower than it. So I'll just have a flick around a couple of other bands to demonstrate what's going on on those. So we'll go to 60 metres. OK, there's not a lot going on here, but I want to let you listen to something. The bottom of each waveband is quite often reserved for digital modes or Morse code or CW mode. Other parts of the band are reserved for slow scan TV and other, other modes. You, you can check on the RSGB website. So I'm going to tune in this guy down here. It's going to make some pretty horrible noises, but it'll be interesting. Let's try the other one. Okay, they're not aliens. It's actually people using digital modes for transmission. And there are, there are modes such as FT8 and FT4 and a load more that I am not aware of. And basically what they're doing is by transmit, if you remember the early days when you connected to the internet and you had this horrible screeching noise down the phone, it's like that slowed down and it allows these guys to transmit text or digital information over massive distances and they can, they can send this signal out and monitor on the internet how far that signal is getting, which parts of the whole world is getting through to and they get a graphical representation on a website of where the signal is going and then eventually there'll be a gap and somebody will transmit back to them and their call sign is digitally encoded and it'll come up using special software that comes up on the screen. There's a lot more to that that I don't understand so we won't cover that today. So let's have a look at another wave band. So we go up to 40 meters so that's the 60 meter band which is around 5 megahertz. Most of the amateur bands are about half a megahertz wide, or 500 kilohertz wide. So this is 7 megahertz. It's a very popular band, and you'll see lots of different modes going on. You learn with experience that different modes have different patterns. So this is single side band, this is single side band, this is single side band, etc, etc, etc. There is some CW or well, constant transmissions going on. And there's some of the digital modes going on here. So let's pick a nice strong one. And you'll notice that we're still on uh, lower sideband here. So let's see if we can decode this. 
bright signal. So from Stoke-on-Trent, Trent, we're actually picking up transmissions all over the world. Sorry, I'll turn that on. We're actually trans picking up transmissions from all over the world. So we've got a strength indicator here, and S9 is really strong. You know, but these guys have got like a 200 foot antenna. So it really will pick stuff up. Let's tune this one in. Okay, so this is typical of an amateur radio contest. Hello, you've got me. Your, read, your signal is 5 and 9. That means it's readability 5, which is the maximum for readability. Strength 9, which is the read maximum for strength. I mean, you've got a great signal. You're coming through loud and clear. I've got your call sign. I've stuck it in the lockdown. Let me get on with the next person. And not only is it a contest to get as many uh, QSOs or contacts as possible in your log, it's slightly contentious as well. Because sometimes it feels like that's the only time the amateur bands are used. It's not. You just have to have patience for listening to radio transmissions. You've got to set aside a couple of hours and you'll get one or two good transmissions and you'll get a load of stuff that you might not be interested in. I won't get into the political debate, but content, amateur radio has so many different aspects to it. It's not fair to criticise one. There's something in amateur radio for everyone, I promise you. If you look into it enough, it's like saying you don't like music. You can't not like all music. It's, not, it's almost impossible. So there's all sorts of different transmissions. Let's go and find another one. No, I didn't get it. I didn't quite get his call sign. If you get a call sign, you can go to qrz.com and you can. I'm not sure if you can register without your call sign. I suspect you can. But if you type in uh, somebody call sign, you can find out information about them. And you'll end up with a page like this. And this is my page. So this is about me, where I am in the world, how many visitors I've had to my page. You can do all sorts of things with this. Uh, it tells you where in the world I am. And some people on log. I don't do the log book on here. And it's got my email address on as well. But you can find out all sorts of information about people. So there's a lot more shortwave bands we could look at, but you can explore this yourself. Just have a dabble, have a play with it, see how it works for you. Let's have a look at another radio channel. Another, let's have a look at another SDR that's very popular. Oh, well, 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 yeah, we are. 